Travel is the most powerful document automation system for lawyers, and it includes features like client intake, a client portal, and much more directly in the platform. This video is a quick run through of Gavel's basic document automation features. First, I'm going to show you a live workflow that can be shared with your team, with clients, and be used internally. Then I'll show you how we create that workflow. So let's get started. On my Gavel Builder dashboard here, which is where I am, I have two workflows. A workflow is a set of questions that generates a set of documents. In this video, I'm going to show you this NDA workflow. And what I'll do is I'll click the Run button, which will take me to what my live workflow looks like. If I click that button, it's going to open up another tab, and I see a variety of different questions that I can choose. All of the questions you see here, along with the logic, the font, the colors, the logo, everything has been dictated by me and can be completely customized by you. Now, what I'll do is to show you how this workflow is going to generate documents and capture information. I'll go ahead and answer a series of questions. So I'll say my disclosing party is Acme Corp. I'll say my receiving party is ABC LLC. And then I'll say that this is an LLC as an entity type. If I click that this is an LLC, it's going to open up another question, which I've also dictated and directed it to ask only in the case where I select that it's an LLC. So I'll now go ahead and go through this workflow. I'll say who all my members of this LLC are. And as I continue, I can go ahead and generate my documents. Now, this workflow is a very simple workflow with just a few questions and just a single document. But your workflows can have many documents, many questions, and many more pieces of logic. But as you can see, I've just generated my NDA, but you can open it up and see that Acme Corp, ABC LLC, and the receiving party as an LLC have all been filled out. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how I actually set up this workflow. So I go back to my builder dashboard and I can either click on the workflow name or I can click the edit button. And that's going to take me to the screen where I see where I created this workflow. This is the Builder Dashboard, and it's created of two main tabs. The Questions tab, where I've created all the questions that I want to ask to gather data for my matter, and the Output Documents tab, where I've loaded all of the documents that I want to generate at the end of that process. Starting with Questions, as you can see, these are all the questions that you saw on the end user interface. I can add additional questions, and they fall within a variety of different question types, file uploads, you can even display instructional information or videos to your end users, particularly that those are very useful when you're providing instructions or instructing your clients on how to use the system. So I'll go ahead and close that up. But now that I've created a variety of different questions, the next thing I want to show you is how you can set up logic inside of your workflow. Logic can be applied to questions, to pages, to which documents are generated, and to how the documents are generated. So as a foundational principle, every question has a variable name. For example, as you can see, my disclosing party, I gave it the variable name disclosing party. For the question, who is the receiving party, I gave it the variable name receiving party. These can all be dictated by you. The one that I'm going to show you now to show question logic is the question number three on the entity type. So the variable name is entity type, and I've created a single select question that has three different entity types. Now, on question number four, I've asked if the LLC is member managed or manager managed. We obviously only want to ask this question if the entity type is an LLC. So we'll use logic, as you can see, we can click this logic button, and say that we only want this question to show if the entity type is an LLC. And when we run this workflow, this question is going to stay hidden until the question number three is answered LLC. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how you actually put this information into your documents. So here on our output documents tab, we have an NDA, but we're going to edit that NDA directly inside of Microsoft Word, where you likely already have your documents. So just go ahead and go directly into Microsoft Word 
And what you'll do is you'll pull up the Gavel Word add-in, which you'll load once the first time and it'll show up every time thereafter. The Gavel Word add-in will allow you to select the workflow that you are putting in your variables into. And you can add a variety of different functions that really provide power and direct the way that your document is going to be generated. First, we'll start with simple variables. Simple variables just mean that you're taking a piece of information that's been entered and you're entering it into your document. So for example, I might want to put right here the disclosing parties information. So I'll go ahead and drag my cursor over the section where I want it to be inserted. I'll choose disclosing party and I'll click insert variable. And what this just did is it included this little bit of syntax here for the disclosing party. I don't need to learn anything about how to add this syntax in. It's all being input by the word add-in. And I'll breeze right through this. I did the same exact thing for receiving party and entity type. All of these variables can be included in standard formatting, uppercase, first letter capital, a lot of formatting options that we're not showing in this video today. The next thing I want to do is add logic into my document. So let's say I have a particular phrase inside of one of my paragraphs, this one about movie scripts or song lyrics. And if you recall seeing, we had a question on whether this was an entertainment matter. And in this case, I wanna show this phrase inside of my document only if this is an entertainment matter. So what I'll do is I'll go click show phrase when, and I'll select, it's already selected for me, but I'll select entertainment is yes. Now I can also add much more complexity to these conditions. So I can say show phrase when entertainment is yes, and the number of members is more than two, for example. But in this case, let's keep it simple and just say, let's show this phrase if entertainment is yes. And I'll go ahead and click insert condition. And as you can see, I now have these little bookends that have been added to that conditional phrase. You again, don't need to learn any of this, but it says if entertainment, then Draft movie scripts or song lyrics shall, be, shall also be part of this definition. And then it has an ending bookend, end the if statement there. These if statements can be nested. They can have, you can have multiple layers of that. You can have paragraphs that appear or disappear. And uh, it, as long as I have numbering inside of my document, that numbering will, be, will remain intact in the final version of this document. So if I have a paragraph condition on this section, and B is removed, then C will turn into B. A few more things I wanna note here, you can also add numerical calculations and you can add date calculations, like calculating the length of time between due dates or adding and subtracting time from a date. And finally, if you're collecting lists of information, you can collect those lists and insert them into your document in many different ways, which we'll also go into in more detail inside of another another video. Now, just taking another bird's eye view of what we did today, what we did is we created all the questions for our workflow. We added logic to those questions and to the pages in which we may have had those questions. Then we set up our Word document inside of Microsoft Word and set up all the different pieces of logic that we needed. And finally, we loaded our document and now we were able to run that document. And if we had multiple documents, we would be able to see all of those documents. Please watch more of our videos to see how you can add more complexity to these workflows. Thank you and happy building.